So the connection between bacterial overgrowth and irritable bowel syndrome is now well established, but it didn't start off that way. In around 1999, we published a first paper suggesting that breath testing was more abnormal in patients with IBS. But things have changed dramatically over the last 20 years. Now there are meta-analyses that show that breath testing is far more abnormal, more likely to be abnormal in IBS as compared to healthy controls, especially age and sex matched controlled studies. But what's even more clear is now from sequencing trials that SIBO is an important part of IBS and E. coli and Klebsiella appear to be the big components of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is a little confusing. So talking about that, it basically means that the bacteria of the small intestine are overabundant. And it turns out that overabundance is due to proteobacteria principally, again, as I've mentioned, E. coli and Klebsiella. And those are the bugs that produce hydrogen. But bacterial overgrowth is complicated because there's a hydrogen type of overgrowth, there's a methane type of overgrowth, and now a new type of overgrowth with hydrogen sulfide. We've never been able to correlate hydrogen with symptoms. We know that when it's there, patients have a constellation of symptoms, but it doesn't matter how high your hydrogen is as it relates to the symptoms. So you could have a hydrogen of 80 and you, ha you could still be bloated as somebody with a hydrogen of 40. But in methane, it's proportional. So the more methane you have, the more constipated you are. And now we know the more hydrogen sulfide you have, the more diarrhea you have. So it's likely that the uh, two gases, hydrogen sulfide and methane, are dictating the phenotype of patients in IBS. But there's one more thing to say about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We think that about 60 or 70% of IBS, especially on the D side, is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. But small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can happen in and of itself for other reasons. If you're on narcotics, if you have adhesions, if you have diabetes of a severe nature with neuropathy, if you have pseudo-obstruction or scleroderma, all of these things can precipitate bacterial overgrowth. And what I'm trying to say is that in IBS and all of these conditions, there is a motility disorder of the small intestine that's contributing to the likelihood that these bacteria will accumulate and have the opportunity to thrive in the gut. So, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is a big part of IBS, but it's bigger than just IBS.